Goethe. The ambition of this panel is not so much the rather easy gesture of thinking outside the box, but rather to collectively think through some of the consequences of that box that is the shipping container. The shipping container is an object, or, or better, an empty space into which a vast multitude of objects can be placed that is of enough interest in its own right. Since 1957, the standardised shipping container has revolutionised not only shipping, but has brought international and international trade, and with this, the work and activity, the lives of other people, into closer contact than was ever before imaginable. As you'll hear from the speakers on the panel today, the shipping container is vital in global supply chains and work on and off ships, and is a key locus of struggle and contestation of what we call logistical capitalism. Further, and perhaps less obviously, the shipping container is now widely used to home surplus migrant working populations, and also bears its own quite specific box print in terms of its impact and the casualties caused with boxes moving across the globe. In some ways, the shipping container is an interdisciplinary, or what is perhaps better described as an indisciplinary object. It brings with it a vast set of technical, economic, social, and ecological questions. The character of this object is shared by a range of, a, a, a range of other objects that are of interest today, from climate change, migration, oil, transportation, housing, to finance, logistics, and the algorithm, the technical and social composition of the present, let alone the future, is radically calling into question the borders that were constructed between academic disciplines in the 19th century and were extended and expanded through the 20th. If the world today consists of relations, connectivity, and flows, while the academy thinks principally in terms of discrete particulars, then this is an academy that has little to say about our world. This is a charge that weighs just as heavily on the social sciences and the humanities that eschew the technical as it does on the physical and technical sciences when they are unable or unwilling to think the social, economic, political and philosophical significance of their objects. Indisciplinary objects such as shipping containers do not call for networked teams of researchers bringing together the latest from each of their separate disciplines. Rather, they propose a fundamental challenge to disciplinary isolation as such, and to the defensive postures taken by the presumably safe identity of the professor of this or that. They disrupt the identity and the local interests of the observer. And in doing so, they promise anew the prospect of science. Science being, of course, only, only meaningfully a discourse without a subject, a language irreducible to the particularities of the observer. In this sense, the challenge of indisciplinary objects such as the shipping container, and arguably most every object of which we've spoken today, is that these objects call disciplinary si uh, challenge disciplinary silos and radically challenge the separation of the scientific investigator from other people. I'd therefore like to thank and to welcome my colleagues who have taken up the challenge to their disciplines and to themselves to speak today about the shipping container and its movements. Each speaker will take up one theme. Richard Le Huron will speak about mapping, imagining and thinking movement. Christina Stringer will speak about working on ships. Natalie Jacques will uh, speak about resisting and striking against logistical capitalism. Francis Collins will speak about the use of shipping containers to house surplus populations, and Rochelle Constantine about the impact of shipping on the most ancient mammals of our seas. In business, it's a common platitude to speak about the importance of thinking outside the box. It's just as well known in business that, as the saying goes, the easiest way to think outside the box is to make sure that the box is really, really small. <laughs> Thank you then for being here and for my colleagues who are joining me in reclaiming what it means today to think big. And in asserting that this box, and by extension, outside of this box, many other apparently empty spaces today, is even bigger than might at first be thought. And beyond this, we assert 
our capacity as finite mortals to have the capacity to think big. Thank you for being here and welcome.